Hello everyone, Heather Holmes here with KTVU Fox 2 News in the San Francisco Bay Area. And joining me this afternoon is Dr. Chotani. Uh, we're going to be talking about COVID-19 and also his, um, his research into the disease and also his conversations with congressional lawmakers. So thank you, doctor, so much for being here. I want to first talk with you about your initial thoughts when you heard about COVID-19. So first of all, thank you very much for having me. And uh, to all the nation, we will get through. Uh, we have to find solutions and uh, we will find the solutions and we'll make it through this thing. Uh, in 2003, when SARS appeared, uh, one of the commitments that I made uh, to the medical community and a paper was published in Lancet uh, that any time a disease like that happens or any disaster that happens, I'm going to put together a lecture that could be translated in multiple languages for anybody around the world to download and use it as their own so we can understand what the reality is and what are the myths about a disease. So th that process started to th in 2003, then MERS came, then other earthquakes, earthquakes came, then uh, tsunami came, then, uh, then, the, then the pandemic influenza, uh, influenza pandemic came and, and you know, just went on and on and, and, and millions of people were uh, getting benefit from that lecture. Uh, and then of course, now we were uh, in this particular era of uh, time uh, where we had a particular problem with SARS coronavirus 2. At that, that's what it was called initially. So I said, well, you know, there were lots of myths and people were going in China and various other countries that you could, uh, you could, you could use ultraviolet light on your body or you could put some oils on your body. So I said, but we're going to put together a lecture. So I put together that lecture and uh, that went out very early. Uh, uh, I think, I believe in uh, mid uh, to late January that was uh, out there and could be translated into multiple languages. And then every few days, I would update the epidemiology on it in terms of the numbers of cases, in terms of numbers of deaths, what was happening, how it was spreading across the world in different countries. Uh, and, and I was, uh, in, in that particular lecture, I was telling them, listen, you know, we gotta be careful. Uh, there are gonna be certain hot spots. And uh, I was very much, very much inter you know, afraid that this disease would come to the United States because we're such a massive country in terms of numbers and how you know, geographically we are so big. And uh, having had uh, worked on infectious disease epidemiology for so many years, over 20 years, I realized one thing, that once a virus is out, it is out. There is no stopping the virus and it'll spread. And, and that, is the, that, that, that is how infectious diseases or contagious diseases spread. Uh, so initially everybody was going, well, you're not gonna have it in the United States, understood, uh, but now we have come to the reality. And, and uh, so, so all of that aside, uh, what I'm really, really interested now is to coming up with solutions as a citizen. Uh, and I, I believe that we all have to work together. Uh, you know, we've got to help the government. We've got to have, help our fellow citizens, human beings uh, in our nation to be able to do something for them so that, you know, we can, we can decrease the burden of whatever is going on. Um, my, my objective over here is to find a way, there are two objectives. One is to find a way to get our nation back to work. I believe that there is a way and a path that we can get people back to work. And, 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 and the other one is that we've got to find, a, you know, vaccines are going to take a long time to develop. Therapeutics are going to, or drugs are going to take a long time. But we're not really sure what's happening over there because there's so many clinical trials that are going on. And, and you know, I, I spent, I, I was a chief scientist for the U.S. Chemical Biological Defense Program. So my job was to develop, you know, as a chief scientist, my job was to oversee all the vaccine, drugs, and diagnostic devices for our war fighters. And, and that was my passion and still is my passion, but I'm doing a little bit of a different thing now. And, uh, you know, what we've got, so I understand how long it takes. And, you know, when, when people say that, oh, my God, we've got a vaccine and first uh, person is now being tested, that doesn't mean we have a vaccine. It takes about 18 months to get there. Uh, so what is the other alternative right now? So we have, a, we have an old uh, way of taking care of things. And, uh, and, and uh, studies uh, have, small studies have demonstrated that th this has worked in coronavirus also. Theoretically, it should work. And that is, you know, plasma transfusion. So for, for that, what we need to find are, are individuals who, are, who have converted now, who are uh, immune to the disease, so they have antibodies in their body uh, and they're not sick anymore, and we can take the blood, take the plasma out, use that plasma for transfusion, 
for people who are in intensive care units. We are, we are seeing that take place now. So is that where you hold the most promise right now for kind of getting us out of this pandemic? So there are so many things that are going on, right? So one of the things that we have to understand and appreciate is that we've got to use every tool in the toolbox right now. Mm -hmm. So vaccine is a tool, drugs are a tool, antivirals are a tool, and then plasmapheresis is a tool. So let's see if we can find individuals. And, you know, we've been very fortunate that, you know, when, when people were saying that, you know, these uh, 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 antibody tests were not good, we started doing them yeah. and we've been doing them for the past two weeks now. And, you know, we've, we've, we've uh, uh, screened, uh, it, this is not a diagnostic tool. Let's, let's be very clear. It's not a diagnostic tool. It is a tool in the toolbox, but what we can do is we can screen people and, 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 uh, and say that, you know, whether they're infectious, so they should be quarantined and if they convert, and, and, they, uh, and they become immune, at some point we'll be able to do that by repeated testing, and then we can identify. So we've got a couple potential candidates right now uh, who had the disease, a full-blown disease. Uh, they are now slowly converting, and we've actually informed the uh, 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 American Red Cross, and, and I'm in contact with them on a regular basis to see if we can, you know, these potential subjects, once they are completely converted, can be, or, or you know, further, after further testing can be used. Now, there are multiple trials that are going on, multiple studies that are going on across the nation uh, at Hopkins and various other institutions. And I think this is another tool in the toolbox that we've got to use because right now, you know, the people who are critically ill in intensive care units, right? And, and, and there's no way that they're going to be saved uh, because, we don't have anything, everything has failed on them. We can give, if, if we can give them, uh, if, if we, we believe that this is gonna work and the experts are gonna talk about it more and more, I believe, but the experts have already said that this is a potential uh, uh, you know, treatment uh, for patients that, that are critically ill because they're, unfortunately they're just gonna die if without anything, right? Mm -hmm. So if there's a chance that this thing can work, then we can save lives, and that's what uh, uh, we're looking for, and I'm looking for in particular. So when you mentioned, though, about this desire to get everyone back to work and things sort of back to normal, um, do you have any time frame? I mean, what, what are you thinking as far as a timetable for, for things returning to somewhat of a level of normalcy? So what I believe is that if you start screening in a massive way, and I don't believe in the home test kit because uh, then we really don't know what's going on because there's no clinical judgment behind it. I think there has to be some kind of a clinical backbone to this entire equation. And uh, if we can identify people uh, who have had, who've never been exposed, you know, think about it for a second. And you know, there's, there are some limitations to the antibody test. One of the limitations is that you know, the first antibody that develops in the body, uh, which is the IgM, develops uh, three to seven days after exposure. Mm -hmm. So if somebody was exposed yesterday, this test is not gonna detect it. But if somebody was exposed seven days ago, then we know that that person was exposed. So, so, so that is pretty clear. Uh, most of the people right now, you know, have been exposed in one way or the other. So, you know, there, there are weaknesses to this thing, but there, there's a strength also that if you were exposed seven days ago, you will see IgM coming up, popping up. And if uh, uh, then you follow them for a little while and, and then, you are, then you see if, uh, if, if the IgM goes down and IgG appears. Once the IgG, IgM is negative and IgG is positive, and that should take anywhere between three to five weeks, depending upon when the exposure was, after the exposure, one should be able to be, have developed antibodies in their body so that they can fight the disease. Now, there's another caveat over here that we still are not uh, confident in the data that has come out of China uh, that uh, reinfections don't take place. So if, there are, you know, if, if somebody gets a disease, gets healthy, we don't know if they are going to be, uh, they can get the infection again. But at the same time, we can say with some confidence that now, you know, you've got the antibodies, uh, you, you're safe to go and work. Now, those people can become Captain Americas. Those are the frontline people, right? Mm -hmm. So you put them at the front, a healthcare worker especially. Think about a healthcare worker that now has, has converted, has, has antibodies uh, developed in their body, and now uh, they don't have the disease you know, there's a very little chance that they'll re-get, the, I mean, get the disease again. And if they observe the precautions, right, if 
they observe the right things and right, I mean, the masking, the cleaning, the gowns and all that kind of stuff. You know, the chances of them re getting reinfected because of the immunity that they've already developed, if they can still get infected is very low. So those are, they become Captain America for us. And, and that's what we want to do. But at the same time, how do we, how do we really uh, identify people who have the disease and, and those product protocols are still being worked on? And, and I'm working with uh, uh, the American Red Cross, uh, the chief medical officer, I have a meeting with her tomorrow and we'll be talking a lot more about it. Those protocols are there, uh, but we've got we've to solidify all that stuff. But at the same time, think about it for a second. In 1984, there was a blood shortage in the country. One state had the blood, they said, this is our blood, we're not gonna give it to you. Mm -hmm. I do not want the same kind of scenario that hypothetically, if I right. have a couple of patients, right? And they turn seropositive, and I know that I can get serum from these people that can uh, now help. I don't want to be profiteering from that. I don't want to control it. And that's why what I've done is I wrote a bill uh, and, and sent it out with a white paper, that uh, a position paper that I wrote uh, to a congressman, senator on both sides of the fence. Uh, and and it, it is with uh, uh, the Speaker of the House also, Nancy Pelosi has gotten it too. So we can have a federal registry. The federal registry gives the federal government the authority then to, to, to make sure that every person is treated equally and every state is treated equally. We do not want people to kind of can take control of that. I believe that, I, for, I think for the, for the sake of the nation, you know, uh, we have to have that. Uh, and that is what I would like to have. And what was the response or what has the response been like to so, your- So the response has been that they've looked at it. Some of them have called me up. Their chiefs of staffs have called me. Mm -hmm. uh, they've talked to me about it in detail. Uh, they are still looking into it. There are a couple of things that I've asked them to do, the ones who have called me. Uh, one is uh, to make sure that like PCR, the Commerce Committee uh, in the House, uh, which, uh, which said that uh, PCR is going to be covered by insurance. I want them to pass a bill that, uh, that, the, that the antibody testing should be covered by insurance. It's not covered by insurance right now. So somebody's got to, you know, I mean, yeah. this, right now it's like I got to think about, you know, how many I can use, right? I mean, it, it does cost money. The operations do cost money. So if it's covered by insurance, then we can do massive screening, right? Uh, and, and it's screening again. It's very critical that we understand the difference between diagnosing and screening. So the antibody test detects antibodies. The, the, the PCR detects the viral load. Uh, and, and by the way, neither of them will ever be 100% uh, sensitive or specific because there's always a margin of error in everything. Mm -hmm. So that is number one. Number two is, uh, you know, what they've asked me is to provide them with more data in terms of how successful it's been. Right now, there's just one study that has come out that has clearly suggested that, in, I, I believe it's five people or six people that they tested it on and, and gave it to and they recovered. There are some weaknesses in the study, but still, uh, I think uh, it is a good study. And uh, in the past, uh, for other diseases, similar methodologies were used. And this is the oldest way of treating people, by the way. You know, it's, it's not nothing. This is not rocket science. It, right now, what we can do is we can, we can craft it in such a way uh, that it is better, robust, more robust science than it used to be before. That's all it is. The other, uh, the other thing that I was going to talk a little bit about is uh, uh, giving people the opportunity to go out and screen themselves mm -hmm. without any restrictions. So, for example, if you want to go get a test, right? Uh, right now, you have to go to a doctor to get that test. What I would like to do is give the opportunity in a country that we live in for individuals, if they want to get a screening test done, uh, to go to a, a spot and, and, and be able to do it. So, so the app that we have gives the freedom to individuals to be able to do that. Uh, they can, they can self-assess themselves. They can, th then they can go and get the testing done. And, 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 and it's, it's, it's built in a way that uh, uh, the, the closest test site, if we have different test sites mm -hmm. across the nation, will pop up based upon their zip code. It is HIPAA compliant. Uh, so privacy has been taken care of. It is on Apple store right now, which is uh, an, an, a medical app. So it passed the test and we've been able to do it. This is exactly what the president had talked about. 
in all honesty. When, he, when the president said that, you know, we'll have an app that is going to tell you, you know, give you an idea if you are at risk or low risk, high risk or medium risk, and it'll tell you where to go and get tested, it has that built into the system. So th that's something uh, uh, important if uh, people want to use it uh, to be able to get that. Uh, and what is that app, sir? It is, it is on, it is on, it's, it's on a website. It is on carelife.md. But if you can, if you go and if anybody has any questions, they can go to Dr. Chotani, D-R-C-H-O-T-A-N-I.com. And uh, all the information that they need is available over there, including uh, uh, the information about the app, including uh, other things that I've been doing with uh, uh, testing and they can see what we've done. Everything is transparent. Uh, as it, as they're supposed to be, and, uh, and and we just want people to get back to work and the nation get back to, you know, we are a nation that wants, to, that builds. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I mean, the critical problem right now is that we are not building. And and what I I believe is that we just need to get back to work and, and find a way, figure out a way using the tremendous amount of brain power that we have in this nation, right? I mean, we've got the best technologists, we've got the best scientists, we've got the best of everything. We've just got to put all of that together so that our nation gets back and, and, and becomes the leader it is. And that's what my, that's why I am an American. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what I think should be the right way to go. Well, that is the shared hope by so many of us. Again, doctor, really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you so much.